Number 17. A Professional Application Dr. John Paul Stapp, a U.S. Air Force officer who studied the effects of extreme deceleration on the human body. On December 10, 1954, Stapp rode a rocket sled, accelerating from rest to a top speed of 282 meters per second in five seconds, and was brought jarringly back to rest in only 1.40 seconds. Calculate his A, acceleration, and B, deceleration, and then express each of them in multiples of G. Okay, so let's just draw a quick sketch. So um, let's say here's the start of the problem, all right, with the little dot, and this guy is going to accelerate from rest to, it says, a top speed of 282 meters per second. So the velocity here at the start, right, or his initial velocity should have been zero meters per second because he's starting off. And then the velocity here at the end should have been the final velocity for this part in black, which would have been 282 meters per second. Okay, And in order for him to uh, change his velocity by this magnitude, it took, it says, 5.00 seconds. Okay, great. Now. Um, after that, right, it says now, and was brought jarringly back to rest in only 1.4 seconds. So if we think about how this problem would have continued, he would have still been traveling forward and to the right, right? So I'll just continue that on out. And finally, he would have been brought to a stop right at about this point, right, where he came to a stop. Okay, so now, in terms of the part in red, Okay, the time that elapsed, it says, was 1.40 seconds. The velocity here at the end of the red part would be his final velocity, which was zero, because it said he came to rest meters per second. And then in terms of the initial part of the red part of the problem, his initial velocity here would have been 282 meters per second. Okay, we should have enough we need to calculate now part A and B. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, how can this one point here have both, how can it be called a final velocity and an initial velocity? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, it depends on the frame of the problem. A very important concept in physics, and as you guys will get into it, um, is how to frame the problems. So in terms of the black frame, or the dark gray frame uh, of this problem, this point would be considered the final value for the, like I said, the dark gray or the black frame. But if I'm looking at the red frame, then that's the start of my red frame, and this location over here would be the end or the final point of the red frame. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we go throughout the class. Framing is very important. All right, so now uh, let's calculate part A. So it says calculate his acceleration, right? So remember, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Okay, so acceleration will be the final velocity value minus the initial velocity value divided by the final time value uh, minus the <clears throat> initial time. Okay, so for the gray part, right, um, the final velocity in the gray part, the dark gray part, that is, would be 282 meters per second, right? Minus the initial was zero meters per second. And that'll all be divided by the final time value, which we can consider to be 5.00 seconds. And then the initial would have been the start of the clock, right? Uh, meters per second. Okay, so now the acceleration for the uh, black frame here is essentially, let's do 282 divided by five. So 56.4. So 56.4 meters per second squared. That would have been his acceleration. Now I'm gonna leave it in three significant figures because I have three significant figures in both of my um, numbers here. Okay, so now uh, for part B, which is the red frame now, I'll just do this all in red. Um, it says to calculate the deceleration. I'm gonna do it in terms of acceleration and what we should find, what we should see is that the value should be negative. So when the acceleration is negative, that means it's decelerating. Okay, so acceleration 
average acceleration, you can just leave the bar out, it doesn't matter, is equal to the change in velocity divided by change in time, same thing. So the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the final time minus the initial time. Okay, so now in the red frame, what's the final velocity? The final velocity was zero. So zero meters per second minus now, what was the initial value for the red frame? Well, the initial value for the red frame was 282 meters per second. Now that'll be divided by the final time and then by the, and then subtracted uh, by the initial time. So this part, you can get a little creative. It doesn't really matter. You can say, well, the total time that would have elapsed should have been the five seconds plus the 140, right? So the final time would have been here um, 6.40 seconds. And then you could have said, well, the time here at the start of the red frame would have been, um, would have been five seconds, right? 5.00 seconds. Okay, great. So if those are the values, let's plug them in. So 6.40 seconds was the final time. The initial time then in the red frame was five seconds. And notice what you get in terms of the denominator, right? So let's first, well, let's first look at the numerator, right? It's just going to be negative uh, 282 meters per second. And the denominator, when we subtract the two, it just simply came out to 1.40 seconds. It's the same thing that they gave us, right? So if, if you calculated the um, change in time as we just did, it's totally fine. Or you could have assumed it started at zero here and the end time was 1.40. That would have been fine too because that would have came out as well. doesn't matter. All right, so now when we do the math here, so let's plug that into the calculator, negative 282 divided by 1.4. So we, it comes out to a value, it's a crazy acceleration, a deceleration that is. So it's negative 200 and one, okay, because I need two sign uh, three significant figures, uh, meters per second squared. So that would be the acceleration. It's negative, therefore it is a deceleration. Now it says to, so for part, uh, well, it's not really part C, but I'll call it part C. Um, so then for part C here, it says to express each in multiples of G. So I'm just gonna give you a quick formula for G. So basically, G will equal the acceleration value divided by 9.80, okay? So in terms of, so G for, the, uh, G for the black part, right, would have been the acceleration value of 56.4 divided by, and these, by the way, all have to be in meters per second. That's the assumption here. This value here needs to be in meters per second squared. I think I just said meters per second. It has to be meters per second squared because those are acceleration values. Okay, so as long as they are, uh, you can plug them in. If not, you gotta do a conversion. Then divided by 9.80. So the G, so G for the black frame would be 56.4 divided by 9.80. So it comes out to, and we're gonna round to three sig figs, 5.76 uh, G. And that would be that. Easy enough. Now for the red frame, right, we'd have to do essentially the same thing. The G is equal to the acceleration divided by 9.8. In this case, it's negative 201, right? So divide that value by 9.80. So again, G here will be equal to negative 201 divided by 9.8. And that works out to be negative 20.5. And that's three significant figures. And we can put the G at the end if we want. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. And uh, remember, if it did, please subscribe. Thank you. I will see you next time.